morning. Running late. But I'm ready to eat out of uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Ooh, Father, I thank you this morning that I come before you with uh, as a child so that I can learn what you have to say today and share with others who are interested. May we have a hunger like never before. May this word be read and done. May we dismiss our religious ways and return to you. We came to the altar, but we left you standing there. And we thought that we could live this life like you without your word. And you said it is impossible. I have found myself today knowing today that it is impossible. It's impossible. There is no way you can live this word without knowing what you said. And Father, I thank you this morning that helped me go through this lesson. Lord, forgive me because this one right here, I'm sticking close to you. I can't go nowhere. And thank you for being there for me because you are definitely there for me. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. And Lord, help me to forgive those who have wronged me. Let your word illuminate us today. Not one person that would come today and hear your word. Let them walk and get an appetite and knowing that I want this. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name, amen. The most important thing to me is the word of God. Most important thing to me. And that's why I'm here. And I'm just sharing with you what I, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, but the well to me. And maybe to God it ain't that long. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep doing it until I get it right. One thing I know. I might not be everything right, but I'm going to try. I'm going to stay in this class. I ain't going nowhere. The Lord let me live. I'm going to stay right here. All right. I'm getting ready to go into the Word. Excuse me, y'all. My nose is it. <sighs> All right. This is ooh, Deuteronomy 31. This book made me sad. It's because it set it up. Moses is getting ready to die. And then you're going to hear the heart of God. And um, I had some notes I wrote down that I wanted to say to myself. But anyway, uh, that I wrote that I wouldn't forget. But um, now I know why God didn't. He totally write it down. Because <laughs> you put it on your iPad, you got to have internet service. Good morning, Ernest. Uh, you got to have an internet, and then if you wrote it down, then you could just pull up your, what you wrote. And then um, you remember. But let me tell you something, what God showed me for me. And when, when we stand, when we go to court with God, and there will be a court date with everybody got to be there. I don't know how God going to do it with all these folks. But whatever, he's God. <laughs> he has order. He said, but let me tell you who's not going to talk to me. He's a liar. He's not going to talk to me. I don't tolerate liars. It won't be anybody in my face pretending, having a show. Oh, I just want to say this. He said, it won't be that. He said, we'll not be any liars there. And when he eliminated liars, then he said, who would be there? And it got my attention. Those five wise and those five foolish virgins. Virgins representing the church. These were not liars. That's scary to me. If he eliminated the liars. The people that waste time. And I'm only dealing with the people. That are sincere. Five of them did what I said, and five sincere people did not. 
That's, that's deep. That you'll be saying, Lord, I did this in your name. And you are serious. Ooh. Do you think them people were playing when they killed Jesus? They were serious church people. They were orthodox. But they were not watching what they were doing. They, they got so caught up in the fact I want to kill him. And forgot to, and forgot to read the word to, felt, to see whether or not God was going to back him up. It's going to be some serious mind that people are going to be standing before God and say, did I not do this in your name? These folk not playing. And God going to say, depart from me, I know you not. That is, woo. that's so scary to me. To know you've been going to church all your life. You were brought up in it. And you went every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time they had church. And you were sincere. And to stand there and hear God say, depart from me, I know you not. That's crazy. That's scary to me. But how can you avoid being like that? How can we escape being sincere, not lying? Because I was going to be one of them. I was going to be one of them folk that stood before God. Oh my God, I can give you a list of things that I didn't do. And scared to do this. And I thought those things please God. And I am a living witness. I'm a living witness. That when I read this word. And as I read this word. I saw how undone I was. And I make most of the people that. And I understand why Jesus said. These were real. Uh, orthodox. Jews with. With cloud great teachers, renowned teachers, well-known people, people who had the influence of an audience that that everybody recognized them to be. These were no, these, these were not no the, the folk that killed Jesus wasn't wasn't, wasn't, wasn't just in about off the street. Those people had big places to go. They they were well known. When they walked, they said, when you when you walk with some of those Jews that killed Jesus. They had other people carrying their suitcases. These were people that were sincere. These people were not killing, they were not killing Jesus because they had enough to do. They killed Jesus because they thought he was a problem. And they didn't examine the word. All you do is Jesus said, if you read the word, you'll know you you you, you you'll find yourself and find where, where you are. But where do I have the most problem with church people? Ooh, my God. I was, ooh, Lord have mercy. I'm so glad somebody called me one day and said, Brenda, would you read this with me? And I said, yeah. I said, she said, what, what does Galatian mean? Because I was going to church all the time. I said, I don't know. I really don't. So I sat down and I said, okay, I'll read it with you. I've been reading ever since. When God showed me, he said, you talking about some, he said, you're going to hear more church folk cussing that day. When you be cast into hell because you, you say ain't no way. Yes, it is a way. I'm telling you. I be one. And I had to start all the way back over because I kept finding too many holes in things I thought. I was not taught to study the word. I was taught to go to church. That's what I was taught. But all, but but what got my attention was I had too many questions. What? Why we do this? Why? Why is it that when I bring somebody to church, they leave and say I don't want to come back no more? That's not the word of God. Why is it that we speaking in tongues and don't and people that come with me say what y'all doing and I can't explain why we do it? That's not that's not the word of God. Well, am I saying tongues speaking is wrong? No. But he said, when you come into my house, you be quiet and let the word talk. Because if everybody in there speaking an unknown tongue and then you got a word from the Lord, he said, that's chaos. And I am not about that. I didn't know that because I was one of the ones in there speaking in tongue. And when I walked out of church with some of the people I brought, I couldn't explain it. And I didn't mean to lie to them. But just because I ain't mean it don't mean I was lying intentionally. You got to, this word is the most important thing that, that can ever be written. And you're going to find out today. But I'm telling you, if we don't turn and get in this word and go back 
and go back and examine ourselves. We gonna be some mad. You can't make. You can't make a. You know. I'm talking about like. You know the guy that was hanging on the cross, and he was laying up there beside Jesus. The Bible says at first when he was got up there with that other thief, he was up there calling Jesus' name and doing all that kind of crazy talk too. But he watched Jesus remain the same. And then he came to himself and said, "Remember me." And God told my will. That guy was. He, he at first he knew that he he said I did what I had to do to hang up here. Some people going to realize I did wrong. That, 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 that's not the issue. I know I'm wrong. But the people that's going to be mad is the folk that go to church. Them the mad people. Because guess what? They mad now. If I mention this word, if I say let's study this word, you talking about, I want to talk about something else. I don't want to go out to eat, sit down with nobody and end up talking about somebody else. If I can't talk about here, I can't talk. If I can't talk about the word, you ain't going to like me. My children said, there you go again. I said, you can't come over here because you know when you come over here, I'm going to say something about this book. You call me on that telephone. I ain't going to talk long because I know I'm going to offend you if I start talking about this word. And these, most of these be church people. I ain't I'm telling you, people that did what they did was, they were no joke. They were serious. So all I can say is I don't care where you go to church. I'm telling you, if we don't repent, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be, I, I say it for me. I say it for me. We got all kind of ways why we justify. He said, you don't have to justify if you let me testify, let, let somebody hear what I had to say. Then you just be quiet and just do what I said. But that's what he gave me yesterday. He said, ain't no lie is going to be there. So I'm letting you know. That means there's going to be some sincere people that I'm going to be turning away. So I'm dealing with liars. I'm just like that too. You're going to lie to me. I'm done. I can't but I'm talk to you for because you lying to me. I want to talk to you. I'm just, that's where God is. He said, so since ain't going to be no liars there, there's going to be a lot of sincere people there. I'm going I'm to keep my head in this book. I'm, I'm not afraid not to read the book. It just don't make sense to me not to. I'm not going to sit. I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't sit here and listen to me if I ain't have my book open. Because you need to see whether I'm lying. Because I say I'm saying the word. I ain't going to say one thing other than what's in this book that I'm reading. I can't play with people live like that. I ain't play with children live in the classroom. I told my sons, I said, oh, God, I wish I had to talk to y'all this, this way. He said, Mama, stop thinking that you ain't doing the good. I said, well, I did. I did. I tried. But it's still, I had to, even though all of the good I was trying to teach you and the way I was trying to teach you, it kept you, I've never, I have six sons, and God is my witness. I know that every son that's shooting and killing, your mama's somewhere connected to that. Your parents are connected to that. Why is it that you don't know what to do with this life? I'm divorced. I have six sons. I stayed in that world with these kids day and night, up and down, all day long. I stayed with them. Let's go to the Word. Draw me a picture of what you saw. Tell me what you seen. In the car, I'm singing. I take the book of Psalm. As arrows are in in the hand of a mighty man, they can sing them song. I fell on my knees when my, when my first son was born. I was on my knees praying with him. And when I saw that boy, and the telephone rang, and I got up to answer it, and he kept praying. I said, you, 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 I didn't know he was, I ain't know no better how to raise no kid. And I said, you still praying? I, after I saw that boy can do that, I said, that the, the sky is the limit. Let's go with this. And he, I taught him standing outside at the bus. God is my witness. While the daycare center bus was picking up or the head start, whatever it was, stood there and I'd be quoting Isaiah 6 and 1, repeat this after me. My God. Mm -mm. My son got whooped if they bought a, if, if I bought if I bought a box of little dinner cakes 
and I was bringing it for your lunch, and you went in there beside that, and that was just me trying to do a lot of this with you. And I said, it's for your lunch, and you ate it, and then you going to lie to me? Oh, I hope you like you stole some, and you did. It just didn't, it wasn't that much. Ask, ask them. You know how that little old Brock can in the grocery store? I'll never forget it. One of my sons said, Mama, can I have this? He was he, he's 35, 33 years old now. I said, no, you can't have that. I'm not buying that. So I went on down to the grocery store, and they were following me, a little bit of kid. He going to go in there and get some of that can and start laughing. And I saw it in the back of his mouth. I saw the little juicy stuff. I went up to that counter. I kid you not, because I was thinking about your future. I took that boy up to that counter and told that man, I said, I'll be back. I said, I'm going to pay for all this grocery and this thing. I didn't mean to pack it. I said, but my son, sir, how much does it cost? He said, ma'am, they do it all the time. I said, but mine can't do it. I took that boy somewhere and I got a switch. I told him up. Because I said, if I don't get you, they'll kill you. He wasn't no more than about two or three. When I say don't steal, don't steal. I meant that from the bottom of my heart. When we go in the grocery store, don't touch anything that I don't buy. Because you ain't got no job. I brought him back to that store. and asked him to this day, did he ever go back in that store and take anything? Not under my watch. And I'm telling you, I've never seen the inside of a courtroom in behalf of a child that I, I had to raise. Never. Because why? I stayed with this word. I did everything I knew to do. But there was a way that God wanted me to do. I didn't, I didn't do everything right. But you better believe if I did do something wrong, I was saying I'm sorry. I was wrong. But it come down to things that I knew was right. I don't play that. Because th I'm thinking. Even when my sons may come back over here today and they grown. And they might have their music up a little loud. I said, I don't play that. They know that. I don't play that. You come out to see me, you, you, you respect these people around me. It's a difference. I know. I, I just know. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell you what, one thing that when I was married, I'll tell you something that their father said to me. I didn't know. I was reading the word. I'm a student in the word, so I'm growing. But God would deal with me through as much as he got to me as much as he could. And whenever there was something wrong in our relationship between my husband and I when I was married, I have a dream and I'll just dream it night after night. And the Lord has show me things. And then one day he told me, he said, it's hard to live with you. I said, why? He said, because God talks to you. Because I, I, he let me see stuff that I didn't even know was going on plain as day. I kid you not. I kid you. I, all I'm saying to you is, we got to get in this word. And I don't even know what I'm saying wrong. I don't even know why you hate me. I am not smart enough to know nothing in this book. Oh, I don't have, I've been called some names. And it be, oh, but let me get this word. Because guess what? I'm finna flip the page again. And it's, it's, that's the crazy part to me. The same thing Jesus said. What you killing me for? What you, what you hit me for? For what? I would tell you, if you don't agree with me, please delete me. Because I delete everybody that says anything against this word. I would delete you in a minute. If you, even if you try to send a message trying to hope I get it, I would delete you. I don't even know if you be talking to me, but I'd delete you in a minute. I don't have that kind of time. Say anything inappropriate to me. I'm just saying. I'm sticking with this book. I'm scared of people be lying. <laughs> well, it is sometimes, some people, some, you could be sincere, but I still check with the book. You can say, God told me this last year. I still check it again today. <laughs> People talk about, girl, what you going to do when you, read it, when you finish reading? What you do when you finish re reading? You ask me that. What you, what you do? I'm going to ask some more foolish question. All right, let's go in here and see what the father said today. Ask the king of the earth and see how, how he's doing. Let's see how God doing today. All right. 
I told you, it book made me sad for a minute. But it's the word of God. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. Moses still talking. And he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. And it's not because I got arthritis. I just walked with y'all 40 years. You know my muscles strong. When I said I cannot, it's because God has said I cannot. Not because I'm physically not able. But the Lord has said, you ain't going to do nothing. You're not going over to the promised land. I can no more go out in and come. I can no more go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said unto me, you shall not go over this Jordan. He said, you ain't going. Moses walked with these. I, my, I, I got a girlfriend that both of us getting the word every night. And as teachers, this girl almost, until she had come to herself, she said, I, she, this is her first time ever reading the word. And this is my first time ever reading it and that it made sense to me like this. But this is her first time ever flipping the pages. And every night she would call me and we would get, on the, get, in, get, get in the word. And she said, I, she said, my heart is broken. She said, because I just got to know him. But the only thing that I could say about Allah, I knew how she was feeling because I just got to know Moses like this too. But it's not Moses. We are not irreplaceable. It's God. But, you know, hanging out with Moses is kind of cool. <laughs> Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord your God, he will go over before you and he will destroy these nations from before you. And you shall possess them. He said, God is going to go over and you're going to possess these nations that you got to fight. And Joshua, a young guy younger than me, he shall go over before you as the Lord has said. God already told us this. Go back to Mother chapter and see that. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon. He beat down Sihon and Og, king of the Amorites, and unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Them giants came. They said, oh, they're too big. God said, please don't, please don't do that to me. And the Lord shall do it. Okay, man, verse five. And the Lord shall give them up before your face. You're going to see this right in your face. That you may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. I've instructed, I've commanded, and nobody going to stand against my word. Nobody. I don't care who you are. Nobody will stand against my word. I don't care if they vote. I don't care if they get online and say, you can't, nobody, understand the same giants that st stood back in the day. They are giants to us today. He said, I mean, nothing and nobody can come against my word. All you got to do is say what I say. Nobody. If, some, if I can find somebody to read my word, I'll, I'll, I'll read my word. And the Lord shall give them up before your face. Why? That you may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. I'm going to make them enemies so weak until you can knock them down. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. You're talking to the children of Israel. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is it that does go with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. He said, I am not a liar. If I told you I'm not going to leave you, I'm not going to leave you. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong, Joshua, and of a good courage. For you must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto your father to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Let me tell y'all. So let me tell you how I live and do this. I don't have anybody call me and say, Be strong and be of a good courage. Not, not, N nobody. Not one person. Well, yeah. I can't say not one person. I do have somebody who has my back. But I remember this lady. I was sitting in this in, in, in Clarksdale at this church. And I had just walked into the word of God many, about 25 years ago. And I knew I was, I knew I was coming to something different. And this lady came up to me. I was sitting, and I'm on verse 8. I was sitting in church in this temple. 
and I sat, and I think I stood up to testify, and I sat down. I saw this lady. Now, mind y'all, I was taught differently. This lady had a whole bunch of moles in her face. I remember this lady to this day. Fat, she was big like me. <laughs> she fat. <laughs> and uh, she had a sleeve, she had sleeveless uh, dress. No sleeves in her dress. I remember that. And I was taught at that time, you don't wear dresses like that. And I looked at her and she looked at me and she said, my God. She looked at me just like this. My God. My God, my God. This lady encouraged me so. And I said, who? But I was, I was trying to examine her. I said, who is she? And she don't have any sleeves on because I was used to looking at people because when you when you hypnotized and you hit it all the time, you look at people and you find something wrong with them so you can bring correction to them. Because that's how you that's how you that's how you just program. You program like that. But it was something about that lady speaking to me, encouraging me. Because I knew my heart was I love God. I knew I love God with all my might. I didn't care what nobody said. I worked with a lady and she came to me one day and she said, Sister Brenda, I'm watching you. You don't fast on Tuesday and Friday. I don't care about you saying that to me. What, what, I, what, I, what, what Why am I performing before you? But anyway, back to the story. I got a lot of ugly stuff said to me. But anyway, this lady knew, she said something to me to, 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 to grab my spirit. And that, when I looked at her again, I said she had no sleeves on. That's the only thing I could see that. And she had a lot of molds in her face. And she said enough to me to make me feel like Moses talking to Joshua at this time. You be strong and be encouraged. That's words like that she spoke to me. And she said, my God, my God. I kid you not, that lady said that to me. I turned around in my seat. Because she was sitting like, they'll put some chairs at the end of the room. I looked back, that lady was gone. I rarely tell anybody stuff like that. But that's my own personal thing that happened to me. I looked back to see that woman, that lady was gone and like a blinking, uh, uh, just as far as I can blink my eyes. I kid you not. And when I read this, when Joshua's in, because when you don't, when you're in the word and you're coming from a, a place where people feel like you, you in a church or you came from a cult that, with people, when I call it a cult, you got to understand what the word means. Go look it up. Just look the word up before you get offended and ready to fight. It means that you're led by man. You do man, you got man made. Do this and do that and don't do this and don't do this. Don't ride a bike. Don't do this. Don't do this. Can't do this. All that don't do, all that stuff. That's what a cult is. That's your culture. You're bringing your own image of what men ought to look like before God without going through God's word. That's why I refer to it as that. That's why I see it. I got six boys. My boy can play ball. What kind of foolishness is that? I'm riding a bike. Pass Get off that bike. You're being controlled like that. Never been to a movie. Never been to a movie because all I, all I heard about a movie was if you go in there, you go in hell. I ain't want to go in there. Now, 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 tell me that I'm, I, you know, I ain't lying. Yes. I, anyway, but they don't make no difference about that. But that lady right there, she, um, put somebody said, girl, you need to be forget, forgive for that. I'm still going to talk about it when it come up sometime. I, whatever. Anyway, but having somebody to say, stay in the word. Don't. Don't diminish. Stay there. Keep that heart you have. That's what Joshua was getting from Moses. Because guess what? There was no human being that is recorded to ever tell Moses to decide. Or Jethro. Jethro did tell Moses to, you know, to, you know how to handle, you know, dealing with that many people. But it, it's something when somebody can call you and see you in the word and say, girl, stay in the word. Stay in the word. But guess what I do? When I fall into a slump of not, I remember people like that in my life that I walked across in my path. I remember words like that. And I hold my head up and I say, I don't, if I'm like Peter. 
If I leave it, where I'm going? Everybody else I know been lying. Getting up in church talking about you got your pastor off. Say you ain't do it. I testify against you. Walking all through church, I could just hear it in my ear. You got the building phone, you got the pastor stuff off, it's appreciation drive, or you got the Sunday school off and it's YPWW. It's, I, I can go through the list. Say you ain't do it. You did do it. But guess what you can do? Stop. That's just my story. It's, you know, I, I see people that write books about coming out of Jehovah Witness. I see people coming out of all kind of trickery stuff. These are sincere people. These people weren't lying. These people don't. These people that I grew up with don't mean in the, they don't mean in the harm. They don't, they don't, they don't do things. They think that they're doing the will of God because my mama didn't mean in the harm when she taught me this stuff. My mama was as sincere as she can be. When I first put on a pair of blue jean pants, my mama would let me in her house. And then she watched me. She said, she looked at me because she thought I would get ready to sleep with everybody. That's what she told me. And she said, Brittany, you still love Jesus? I said, Mama, I do. I said, Mama, I love. I said, Mama, they lied to us. And finally, she sat down and she looked at me like this. And she, she never did wear pants. She started letting me talk about the word of God to her. She said, oh, when I think about that, finally, my mama, let me say something to her about God's word. Because at one time, she couldn't stand me. Because when, you, when you're bewitched like that, captivated, you, you can hate people, and you can be for real. You can be serious. People call me on the phone. I heard about you. The bishop called me on the phone. You ain't coming back to my church. I get a phone call like that. You're not coming back to my church. They, they, I, I call you personally to let you know. They got you down as a speaker. You're not coming back up in here. I never came back. I kid you not. I kid you not. I got that phone. I said, what have I done? I don't, whatever you done, I don't like what they saying about you. What I look like letting you come in my church. I'm the bishop. I'm not lying to you. I got that phone call. I done, I done been where the, oh my God. But anyway, but I know what it's like to be encouraged. You, they not hate me. It's not me that you hate. I haven't done anything. I'm the same, same skin. The same, I mean, I may look a little bit different. But I'm the same person that, that sang in the choir, direct the choir. I'm the same person. But you didn't turn on me until I got this word. You didn't treat me like that until I started opening this book. And I started saying, we playing games. I got more. And the Lord, that's why I'm saying to us, if we don't stop, if we don't stop, you're going to be sincerely. I don't even know how you could be sincerely talking to God. And I'm telling you, because there ain't no need of him saying to me, uh, I got so much stuff. I got so many messages coming up to you, to me. And we didn't get done. And the Lord, he, he is he. It is he that goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you, neither forsake you. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priest, the son of Levi, which bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. He heard what God said, and he said, I deliver this thing to you. And Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, in the solemnity, when y'all come together as a solemn of the year of release and the feast of the tabernacles. He said, when all the ears will come together and appear before the Lord, every seven years, you're going to get your debt released. The year of release. When all the Israel has come to appear before the Lord your God in the place which he shall choose, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. He said, you're going to read this word. Gather the people together, men, women, and children. Everybody's supposed to hear this word. It's too good. Men, women, and children, 
strangers within your gates that they may what? Hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words in this law. Why? That their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land where you go over Jordan to possess it. Everybody's supposed to know what this word says. And when people say we don't need the law, then God should have cut it out. Why would he add something that Jesus said? Go back and learn it. But then, then you get uh, today's grace people that say we're under grace. Great, well, hold up. When they say that, Anyway, I can't get off into all this stuff people say. I'm sticking with the word. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, your days approach. This is God talking to Moses. This is what God gave me to Moses. Behold, your days approach that you must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. I'm going to tell him what I want him to do. And Moses and Joshua went, God spoke, they responded and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. Just to have that direct conversation. Oh, I can't even get off into that. I mean, it's not so much God's word. We got something that we, we got an example of what they did. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, you shall sleep with your father, fathers. And this people will rise up and go a whoring after gods of the stranger of the land, whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. That's why I was saying when I read this book, I was like, I said, Lord, you did all. I said, I've been walking in this word. This is the 31st. Day 31 days I've been in Deuteronomy, day and night. I had no idea them people gonna walk away from God like that. I knew they were gonna do some crazy stuff, but God knows. He said they're gonna walk away from me. And I stopped and I hesitated. I just said I can't get it. He said, Hold on, brother, let me talk to you. He said, Y'all do the same thing. He said, Everybody make promises to me when times are hard. But when I brought them country people in that city, and I say country, brought them out of Egypt. And they saw all that stuff, they forgot me like I was nothing. He said, y'all do the same thing. And you have to check yourself. You have, I find you doing the same thing sometimes. Check day. Get paid on the check day. You been waiting around on that check to come every month? And what you going to do when you get a breakthrough? And as soon as you get that, you forget everything that you said. He said, that's why I don't play these vow things. I don't play with that. He said, y'all so much like these people until it ain't much different. You get in the altar and you say, I married this woman. I'm going to do it. And then next thing you know, you're beating upside her head. You work with money and you do the book, you the bookkeeper and you, you know, you, you, you tuck it a little bit back, just like Judas. He said, but I believe in you. I still, I'm still God. I know what they're going to do. But you ain't seen me miss a beat. Because when I first made you, I looked at that dust and said, I'm going to make me a man. I believe in what I do. All the way up until Jesus hung on that cross. And the church ain't, 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 ain't did right since then for a lot of things. I mean, we mess up a lot. This word, this thing is alive. We still sleeping with each other. We still doing everything God said. And then we justify, we make laws. People going back. I asked the girl tell me she they going back to church. And I said, why, why y'all going back? When it's so much going on. 
What was that? The people still sitting up there being celebrated. It's the pastor appreciation. It's this. They still doing the same. Old stuff. That is so crazy to me. We in a position now that we are helpless. I wouldn't dare go back in that building without going before God and say, what can I do to be saved? What have I done wrong, Lord? When I saw that, that God knew the deal, I had no idea that God knew. I, I didn't know that it was written like that. I never thought about it. I didn't. When you walk into a movie and you see a, something happen, you say, what? That's how I did yesterday. That thing, man, I got so sad. I did the Lord was like, don't be sad over them. Learn from. Them. Watch your words. Watch your words. When you tell me you're going to do something, follow through. I ain't hard to, I, I, and I'm going to be there to help you. Learn from these people. He said, you have to hear my word. If you don't hear my word, you'll forget me. Because you'll say, I'm going to go on a diet and see a cake. And there you go with the, with the frosting on your lips. <laughs> it's funny to me. That's how me and God talk. <laughs> you watch your words. Stop saying you're going to do things that don't follow through. I have more pleasure out of you saying nothing than to say something and don't do it. Okay, let's see what else he said. My God, that, that got me. What verse was I on? These these folk going to leave me just as sure as you die, Moses. Oh, Lord, I don't know what verse. Somebody tell me what verse was I on. Ain't nobody got your Bible over. Ain't nobody got no comment down there. <laughs> And the Lord has said, does go before the and Moses wrote this law and delivered it. And I said, I read it. And the Israel come to appear before the Lord and place. Oh, oh Lord, I don't make me go back and read all this. What was that? Okay, he said he's going to die. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle, he did that, and, and said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with your fathers. Oh, it's him, 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with your fathers. And this people would rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land where they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. All you got to do is get your eyes off this word and I declare you'll fall down. Then my anger shall be kindled against them. They're going to stir me up in that day and I will forsake them. I am going to forsake them. I already told you and I'm going to keep my word. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these the evils, are not these the evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Didn't God tell us that it was gonna happen just like this? They're gonna remember what I said. We don't we don't remember God until crazy stuff happens. We remember God every time you, we forsake him all while the sun is shining. But as soon as something happens, we don't understand. We run right back to him. And that's why God said, learn from these folk. Learn not to do that. I bet they, they already took me through that. Why y'all taking me through the same thing? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils I don't want to see all that sick stuff these folk doing. I'm going to hide my face. In other words, I'm going to see it. But I, I'm, it, it ain't like I'm, look, I'm gloating over what you're doing in the fact that, you know, they, they're going to be all right. You, you, they're just not ready yet. They just, they just, you know, you know this, bring it, look, look how long it took you to get the word. Don't be no fool. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall do, wrought in that they are turned unto other gods. Just as sure as you have not read this and stayed in this word, we are in trouble. Now, therefore, write you this song for you and teach it in, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. What's the power of a song? That's why I sing every day. To remind myself of this word. I make I'm like, as soon as I got through, I already got my song. I wrote it last night. I'll be that long. Cause I know that the power of a song will get you to retain it. 
get a pick up something in your spirit. Well, you good? That's, that's a back in the day song. <clears throat> How you gonna do it? Just roll it. That one of them old school. God said, I know what you do with a song. That's why, I'm, that's why I want Moses to write it. But when I shall have brought them into this land, into the land which I swear unto your fathers that flows with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxed fat, then they would turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass when many evils, that's what, that's what we like. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song should testify against them as a witness. He said, I'm going to be on the witness stand and you're going to think I'm for you. And I'm going to be up there testifying against you. I'm going to let you remember the words of that song. I'm going to put that song in your babies, in your wives, in your children, the strangers, and anybody that dwell among you. You're going to learn this song. I'm going to be on the witness stand and say, this is your honor. Just like today, I can testify against you. And I ain't nobody. I say this. My own daddy got caught up in a scandal. And I saw my daddy go through something that, that, that bothered me. It wasn't so much what they said he did. It was how when he tried to come back, I saw the same church sit around and walk away from my daddy like he was nothing. I testify against you. I saw my daddy die. He was nothing but skin and bone. The same preachers that was his friend, I thought. I watched you and I stood up in church and I said, I was about 18 years old and I was a little older, maybe 19, maybe 20, 19, 20. And I said, my dad is hurt. I said, but I don't understand this. How can a man fall into something and then he comes back and say, I'm wrong. And then you walk away from, I said, what's up with this? Now, mind you, I ain't know no word, but I ain't stupid. I testify against you. I'm not holding nothing against you. I'm just telling you what God said. You better turn and go to this word and find out what y'all been doing or what we've been doing. This ain't no y'all thing. I can't talk about, I can only tell you about what I can testify against. I can't talk about places I have not gone. So if I make an example of what my life has gone through, I'm just telling you the truth. And I got a lot of truth. And I ain't got nothing to hide. I don't get no joy out of spilling stuff. But man, some of this stuff it makes sense to me because it's, it's what God is saying. I put you on that witness stand. You got to tell the truth. What, what happened? Every time, every single time, every time I look at my life and I did something stupid is when I got my eyes off the word. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen you that this song shall testify against them as a witness for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land which I swear. I know, you're gonna, I know what you're going to do. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. God love him just that much. He got a plan for when you backslide. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with you. You're going to do it. You're going to take them over there. And they're going to have a good time when they get there. Now, the, Joshua in the army is going first. God already got the army already set up. The children of Israel, the children and the mamas and people that's not a part of the um, military, they're not going. They're going to go over Jordan and get everything under control, fight, do what they got to do, and then they're going to usher the people in. Very organized. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, 
that Moses commanded the Levites, these were the people as ministers, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark, inside of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. You talking to the Levites too? Take this book in the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And I'm alive and I know what you'll do with me being alive. And how much more after I'm dead, after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes, and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. Call them together, and I'm going to tell them what y'all going to do. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. Because God already told me what y'all going to do. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days. Before you would do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hand. Moses told him exactly what God just said. He's going to turn it back on me. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. And chapter 32 is where the song is. And I can't hardly wait to see what it says. Only thing that I am saying today, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever this word is saying, and I pray, and I said, Lord, what? And I'm, I'm before God, even this morning, looking at myself through this word, not trying to slander anybody. But I do know. I said, Lord, how do I avoid you seeing my future, saying that she ain't going to make it? She's going to turn against me. He said, Stay in the word. Stay there. And after you stay there, do what I said. And I don't ask you to do nothing hard. Just do the things that I said. And then what you commit to me, follow through. <sighs> I right, talk to y'all later. Bye.